Hey everyone, this is Derek from Keratin Company and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite watch complications, the moon phase. Traditionally, the moon phase was created for astronomers, sailors, and anyone who needed to know the lunar cycle. I've chosen eight watches from different brands in our shop, Keratin Co., to show you the different examples of how the moon phase complication is done. A quick wrist shot check. Today I'm wearing the Drive de Cartier Moon Phase. It's one of my favorite Moon Phase complicated watches that's come out in the last few years. And I'm not gonna talk too much about it now because you'll actually see a little bit more of it in the video. So let's jump right in. The approximate lunar cycle lasts 29.53 zero five eight 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 five three days and in order to take all that information and put it onto your wristwatch many manufacturers will take a 59 tooth disc and place two images of the moon on that disc and now every day as that disc rotates each phase of the moon will start to show through the aperture so after 29.5 days you'll have each image of the moon would have gone through its full full moon, waxing, new moon, and waning phases. Out of all the astronomical complications that's available, the moon phase is the most commonly used. So today, let's jump into Cartier. Here is the Drive de Cartier moon phase. It is a 40 x 41 millimeter cushion shaped steel case that was released in SIHH of 2017. The moon phase complication was a welcome addition to the drive lineup. It uses a time only piece and adds an elegant moon phase to it. The silver dial is beautifully executed with this fling K pattern to create subtle wavy lines along with the stark black Roman numeral hour markers. And as you turn the watch over onto the side, you will see the crown which features a blue synthetic spinel and above it is the moon phase pusher. And as we get closer to the dial, you will see at 7 o'clock, Cartier features its hidden signature. The moon phase disc here features the gold colored moon and stars on a deep blue night sky. The actual aperture is also crescent shaped and continues that gorgeous fling K pattern. And now just for kicks, let's learn how to set the moon phase on the Cartier drive. First, open the crown to operate the hands and move it below 10 and 2. After moving the hands below 10 and 2, use the pin and push into the moon phase pusher located above the crown. As you continue pushing, the moon phase will cycle through its moon phase positions. To find out the current moon phase, simply go outside and stare at the moon. Just kidding. Or alternatively, you can search the internet for the current phases of the moon. There's several calendars out there that's easy to use. After you're done with the moon phase, you can go ahead and set the time. Simple, clean, and easy. Let's move to the next one. Up next, we have the Omega Speedmaster. Now, it wouldn't be a full list talking about moon phases without the official moon watch, since the Omega Speedmaster is the only watch to have been on all six lunar missions. Now, with all classic Speedmasters, this Omega has a chronograph, which is a central focus here. But on top of that, encased in the 44.25 millimeter stainless steel case, you have a blue ceramic tachometer scale in liquid metal. You have the date in a pointer style and you have the moon phase at six o'clock. And the moon phase here is the most photorealistic out of all the ones we're gonna talk about today. The dial of this model is a deep blue sunbrush with rhodium plated indexes. And the moon itself is created from a metallic crystal disc microstructured to obtain a high resolution image of the moon. You also set the moon with the crown, which makes it super easy to use. The aperture here also shows 29.5 days, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video is roughly the amount of time the moon goes throughout its lunar cycle. On top of that, inside the movement is Omega's coaxial master chronometer 9904, which has been certified by METAS and is the only full anti-magnetic watch on this list. It's a great all-rounder watch with an incredible, beautiful moon phase. I love this watch. I think it has some incredible innovations with its caliber inside the movement as well. And it's already made history as the moon watch. So now it's just having fun here. Next up, we have the only submission from our German manufacturer, Glashütte Original. Today, I'll be showing you Glashütte Original's Panomatic Lunar 
in the blue dial. So off the bat, you have a 40 millimeters times 12.7 millimeters stainless steel case. The dial is a galvanized blue fine mat with markers applied. The scales are printed and the hands inlaid with super luminova. The dial layout itself is unusual in the sense that it's an off-centered style. So on the left side, you have the hours and minutes and seconds. And on the right side, you have the moon phase aperture along with the panorama date, which has both of the date wheels on separate disc and they're flush together. So there's no step in between them. It's a very incredibly difficult feat, which Glasshutta original has mastered. Inside the movement, you have the caliber 9002, which is an automatic caliber. It holds a 42 hour power reserve. It's beautifully decorated with beveled and polished edges, blued screws, Glasshutta's three quarter plate, Glasshutta's stripe finish, and also it's hand engraved balanced bridges, like you see here with a double swan neck regulator. Overall, the Panamatic Lunar is such an awesome package. You get the German silver moon phase disc, the big panorama date, and a nice layout of the off-center hours and minutes. I think the value for money here is spot on, and it's just a great piece overall. Up next, we have the IWC Portofino handwound moon phase. This piece was created by IWC as to paying homage to their first Portofino from 1984, which also had the moon phase display. What's different here is that it is a hand-wound caliber with the 59800 caliber movement, which contains a power reserve of eight days when fully wound. The dial itself has an interesting layout where you have the power reserve on the left side at the nine o'clock, you have the date window at three o'clock, you have the moon phase at 12 o'clock next to the IWC logo, and at six o'clock you have the small seconds. On the dial, you have gold applied hour markers along with the hands, including the power reserve and the seconds. IWC outdoes itself here with the moon phase disc since the wheel contains a higher number of teeth. So that way, theoretically, a watchmaker would only need to adjust this moon phase one day in 577 and a half years. Overall, for the IWC Portofino handwound moon phase, this watch out of the watches reviewed here today is going to be the largest one at 45 millimeters. It makes reading the dial very easy and having some innovations like the eight day power reserve and the fact that their moon phase doesn't have to be adjusted for over 500 years is incredible. Next up, we're gonna talk about JLC. And what I have today is the JLC Master Ultra Thin Moon. This is one of my favorite collections from JLC. The Master Ultra Thin has some of the best looking watches and they're super thin as by their name, but they fit really well on the wrist. To start us off, the dial is a deep black sun ray brushed with applied hour markers. There's dolphin style hands with a very elegant appearance and everything is nicely packaged in a 39 millimeter stainless steel case. As we get to the moon phase, we see a golden brown moon against a midnight blue sky disc. It's a really nice contrast with the overall deep black night sky of the dial. And there's also the small hand around the moon phase with the pointer date. In my opinion, adding the pointer date here was a great execution because now you don't have to cut out a window for the date and it really keeps the balance of the dial well. Overall, I think the JLC Master Ultra Thin, which also comes available in gold and also different dial colors for the stainless steel, uh, is a really great package for a moon phase watch um, with its elegant lines and its elegant pointer style date. And it's just a great package overall. Now I'm gonna show you the Jack of Draws Grand Second Moon Ivory Enamel. First off, this is cased in a 43 times 12 millimeter 18 karat rose gold case, and it contains a self-winding 68 hour power reserve movement. But the dial is really the showstopper here. Typically enamel dials are already very difficult to do because there's a high percentage of dials that don't make it past. But here, Jack and Draws displays their proudness with the Grand Few enamel dial, one of the most difficult to master. Grand Few is a plain single color enamel 
Grand Fu translates to Big Fire, which is roughly over 800 degrees Celsius or 1472 degrees Fahrenheit. And the way it works is by repeatedly firing this uniform talcum powder, which increases the risk of breaks, cracks, or bubbles each time. It looks simple, but it's very difficult to master because if there's any error in the process, you have nowhere to hide and you have to start over. I mean, 60% that starts in this process don't even pass. This is why Grand Fuel dials cost more than the other finishes. Now on the dial, it displays the off-centered hours and markers. The hour markers are painted over the ivory Grand Fuel enamel dial in black with Roman numerals. The moon phase contains a blue disc with stars and moons applied in 18 karat and 22 karat red gold. You also have the pointer type date display here along the moon phase at six o'clock. Overall, if you want something so unique and very difficult to create, the Jack of Draws is a fantastic pick because of its incredible attention to detail with its enamel dial and a lot of time and attention to create this work of art. Now we're gonna get into Vacheron Constantin. Here today, I have the Vacheron Constantin 56 complete calendar. Part of the 56 design includes this retro contemporary style. It has the lugs inspired by the Maltese cross. It has a crown that's housed, so it's built into the case. And it has a nice box type sapphire crystal. This piece is cased in 18 karat 5N pink gold and its dimensions are 40 millimeters times 11.6 millimeters of thickness. On the silver dial, you can see a sector dial style, which is reminiscent from the 1950s timepieces from Vacheron Constantin's heritage. In following the design code of being very clean, Vacheron Constantin puts their moon phase aperture at six o'clock, where you have an applied gold moon over a deep blue night sky. Inside the 56 complete calendar, you have the self-winding 2460 QCL. You can see that there is a 22 karat red gold rotor, and also there are several Cosse Genève and decorations on the movement itself. This watch also contains the Geneva seal. Overall, Vacheron Constantin creates a really compelling package with their 56 complete calendar. It's a great size at 40 millimeters, and you have good legibility. I like the usage of the Arabic numerals, which makes it super easy to read. And I think it, they do a really great job with the sector dial. Up next, we have the Blancpain Villeray Quantium Complet. This watch is a full calendar watch with an elegant moon phase at six o'clock. It's cased in 40 millimeters times 10.7 millimeters thickness in 18 karat rose gold. On the opening dial, you have a complete calendar layout with day and month windows and an elegant curved blue steel pointer date. There is also the moon face disc at six o'clock mentioning the 29.5 days above it. It has some fun with this moon face by putting a nice calm face on it. The setting of the calendar or moon is all done via under lug correctors, which is an incredible feat since it requires no tools, just your fingers. Inside the movement is the caliber 6654 with an impressive 72 hour power reserve. This is one of the most elegant watches on this whole list and it's done by conveying so much information but in a very easy to read way. Overall, I think the Blancpain Villeray Quantum Complete is a gorgeous watch. It's one of the best proportionally sized watches at 40 millimeters and it displays all the information in a very easy and legible way. Next up, we have the Long Jeans Master Chronograph with Moon Phase. I think on this whole list here, the Long Jeans Master Chronograph with Moon Phase is the most complicated watch we have showing here today, and it's also the least expensive out of all of them. This one is a 42 millimeters times 14 millimeters in stainless steel. Uh, this one also does come in 40 millimeters, and it contains a silver dial with painted Arabic numerals and blued hands. It also contains multiple functions, such as the full calendar of month, day, and date, chronograph function with 30 minute counter, a 24 hour display so you can know if it's AM or PM, and of course the moon phase display at six o'clock with the 12 hour counter surrounding the moon for the chronograph. 
The moon phase disc contains a gold moon and stars on a deep blue disc. I think Longines Master Chronograph is going to provide some serious value if you want to get multiple functions for a great price. It's a great way for entry level if you're trying to get into a moon phase as well, along with trying out some other complications. So out of those watches, which one was your favorite? Leave a comment below so we can start chatting. If you liked this video or found it useful, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel so that way you don't miss any of our latest videos. Lastly, thank you so much for watching. It's been a minute and I hope to see you next time.